Hey everybody, welcome to Ocean, <laughs> not Ocean Atmosphere Planet. Come on, Mr. Wigan. It's been a long year. Um, weather patterns, weather patterns, 1.5 investigating why clouds produce rain. So in our last lesson, we were learning about uh, just why clouds form in the first place. Uh, we learned about Joanne Simpson. We learned a little bit about, um, yeah, yeah, just what, what are the necessary, uh, uh, what's the necessary context, I guess, for cloud formation. Anyways, um, so investigating why clouds actually produce rain. We're going to do a number of experiments in the sim. Uh, in this lesson, we're going to do a little bit of rereading um, on the article, one of the articles we read yesterday. Uh, but first, let's jump into the warm-up. Ooh, what is what's happening here? I don't want to print this. Why would I want to print this? Come on. Here we go. All right. Man, rough start. Rough start. Okay. Um, <clears throat> we just have some questions, right? Uh, let's let's read this together. Energy is an important part of weather. Didn't, didn't they just say water is an important part of weather in like one of our last lessons? For example, energy is involved in forming clouds and in rainfall. Answer the following questions to help you think about how energy works when it comes to weather. Good grief. I am so glad we went through that thermal energy unit earlier on because that really forms a strong foundation for understanding a lot of this uh, weather stuff. So uh, let's look at the first question. What happens when water vapor cools? Choose all that apply. Ooh, what, what does happen when water vapor cools? Remember, water vapor is water as a gas. Okay. Uh, number two, the energy that transfers out of an air parcel to form clouds originally comes from the energy that transfers out of Okay, okay. I got it. Uh, number three, notice the clouds of different sizes in the photos below. Ooh. Ooh, those are, those are nice. Look at those clouds. Um, notice the clouds are different sizes in the photos below. In which photo do you think the most cooling and energy transfer occurred to form the clouds? All right, answer those three questions and uh, come on back to me. All right, next we are on tab number two, rereading what are clouds. This is the article that we read the other day, right? But we're going to read just a section of it again today, and we're trying to answer this question right here. What causes an air parcel to cool? We're going to answer that right there. So it says, read the section, Cloud Formation and Energy, in the article, What are Clouds, right down below, and gather evidence to help you answer the investigation question. As you read, you may want to highlight parts of the text or add annotations that help you to answer the question. So let's go find that section. What was it called? Cloud Formation and Energy. We're going to scroll on down, scroll on down. Ooh, look, I highlighted some stuff right here that I wanted to remember and talk about. Uh, we did that in class uh, just today. Uh, what all clouds share? No, that's not it. Oh, here it is, cloud formation and energy. It's towards the bottom. All right, so we're going to reread this section. And we're, again, we're trying to answer this question, what causes an air parcel to cool? So again, read that, answer that question, and then come on back to me. Hey, I forgot we were supposed to talk about the definition of a cloud. So a uh, cloud, liquid water droplets suspended in the air. So let's let's park here for a second and let's talk about clouds um, and the difference between water vapor and liquid water. We said water vapor is water is a gas. And common misconception is that clouds are a gas. Like I said, it's a misconception. If you see a cloud, that means it's liquid water water, or it actually could be frozen water too. Um, water vapor is a colorless gas. You can't see water vapor. In fact, look around you right now. There's water vapor everywhere, all around you, but you can't see it. Um, when it forms a cloud, it has condensed now into liquid water. It's no longer a gas, it's actually liquid water. Well, Mr. Reagan, how can all that water be suspended up in the air? Um, you know, I mean, wouldn't it all fall down? Well, the droplets are very, very small. Um, and of course, you've seen things before that float around in the air, like dust particles, things like that. That's how small we're talking about, right? These water droplets are teeny, teeny, tiny. So they are able to stay suspended in the air, all right? So uh, cloud, liquid water droplets suspended in the air. All right, just wanted to make sure we do that. Let's jump into the sim. Let's click on tab number three here. And uh, let's find out what we're supposed to do. Students use lab mode to make different weather events and to study the role of energy transfer in relation to the size of each weather event. So 
there's three different weather events we're going to try to create, um, and they're right here. We need to do, 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 make three weather events, clouds with some rain, clouds with no rain. Hey, we read about those types of clouds in our uh, last article in the last lesson. And then clouds with a lot of rain. So really, we're looking at the rainfall levels. Right here, we need rainfall levels one or two for some rain. Obviously, rainfall level zero for a cloud with no rain. And then clouds with a lot of rain, we want rainfall level three or four. All right, so let's build the first one together. I'm going to go ahead and click on the weather pattern sim. And I already have all of my uh, information to get us uh, some rain. But you can just follow along with me. Are we in the lab mode? That should be where you're at, the default lab mode. All right. Now, I actually wrote down already all of the conditions that I want to uh, uh, have here. So I want my surrounding air temperature to be negative 20 degrees. Hey, why don't you do this with yours? Ta -da, surrounding air temperature, negative, oh, come on, you can do it. Ah, oh, there we go. Negative 20 degrees, perfect. Okay, what else do I need? Starting air parcel temperature, that's gotta be 25. Oh, it is 25 degrees, fantastic. All right, and water vapor, it did tell me uh, what to do with water vapor between medium and high. Okay, so I need to go change my water vapor. Put it between medium and high. Okay. I like 35. That looks good. Oh. 35. It doesn't want to give me 35. I just want 35. Can I have 35? No, it won't give me 35. <laughs> Crazy sin. Okay, now I'm gonna hit run. Let's do a thing. Oh, look, 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 look. These yellow arrows, what did we say those represented? The energy leaving this air parcel right here. And we've got a nice cloud, and look at this. Rain's falling, so we've created rain. And uh, what did we want? I think a rain level between one and two, right? So hopefully, that's what we ended up with. Hey, let's look at a couple other things. Uh, our surrounding air temperature and our air parcel temperature are now exactly the same. They've reached equilibrium. And again, we said, this doesn't change because this is so small. It's not gonna have a, a significant impact on all of the surrounding air, uh, right? So even though this temperature decreases, this one does not because there is so much surrounding air. It, 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 there's no measurable difference, right? Um, <clears throat> our air parcel water vapor decreased, right? What did it start off at? 34 uh, kilograms, now it's 13. Where did all that water vapor go? It became liquid water in the form of this cloud and the rain that we saw. All right, let's go to analyze and let's see how we did. Uh, liquid water, okay, rain level was a one. Great, that's exactly what we wanted. Uh, we wanted some rain. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, energy transferred out, it looks like was 99. Megajoules, so I'm gonna to have to change a couple things here. Energy transferred out, uh, 99 megajoules. What was my final air temperature? It was negative 20, so my air parcel temperature difference was 45 degrees. And uh, there you go, there you go. So looks good, looks good. Now here's, here's what you need to do. You need to now uh, create your own uh, build in, uh, uh, in the build mode right here, go to the build. Uh -huh. And now you need to create uh, a weather event with zero rainfall and a weather event with, what did they say? Significant rainfall, a lot of rainfall. Uh, 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 it's right here, it's right here. A lot, oh, oh, okay, that's very descriptive. A lot of rain. So you need a rainfall level uh, a three or a four. Rainfall level is what you're looking for. And then you'll collect your data and you will add it all into our data table down here. And then you're gonna answer some questions. <clears throat> okay, uh, about the starting temperature of the air parcel versus the surrounding air temperature, the final temperature of the air parcel uh, versus the surrounding air temperature. And then using the temperature data, describe the direction that energy transfers and when it stops. So what do we mean here? Is it transferring into the air parcel or out of the air parcel? And then when does it stop? And then lastly, use evidence for the sim to answer the investigation question. <sighs> what causes an air parcel to cool? What does cause an air parcel to cool, okay? Conduct those experiments in the sim, collect your data, answer the questions, and come back to me. Alrighty, for the homework,
uh, we're actually jumping back into the sim, um, but uh, there, it, it's much more structured for you and uh, it should be pretty clear. Uh, so we're gonna go back into the lab mode of the simulation, remember it's the default mode that it opens up to. Um, but now we're, we're being told very specifically, uh, set the surrounding air temperature to negative 25 degrees Celsius and set the air parcel temperature to 35 degrees Celsius. Set the water vapor level as indicated in the data table at the right. So the only thing that we're gonna be doing, we're gonna be, we're gonna be conducting three tests and we are changing the water vapor level in our air parcel, okay? And uh, <clears throat> we, uh, we need to find out, okay, well, what's the rainfall level every time? What are we, what are we really trying to find out? Um, to, uh, three tests to investigate the effect of the amount of water vapor on the amount of rain. Now, I'll bet you could probably, even without conducting this test, figure that out. Um, you're, you're smart people, and uh, you could probably tell me already. But conduct the test, collect your data, um, answer these questions. When the amount of water vapor increased in the air, the rainfall level did what? And then explain, oh, here we go, connection, how building the lake near Gale Town could affect the amount of water vapor and the amount of rain. Ah, we're coming back, right? Remember Gale Town, they kept having those big rainstorms. And some people said it was the lake. The lake did it. It's the lake's fault. Um, well, could the lake have an influence on more severe, more significant uh, weather events? Let's see what we find out in the sim, and let's uh, come up with an explanation. So once you finish um, that, you are done, and we will see you next time.